Good morning. Today is July 4th, 2020, and we are going to be visiting the Reed Cemetery in Dale City. This is another one that David Cuff has uh, recently restored. I believe it was last year, um, but he did he did restoration work here, and he's going to walk through it with us and tell us all about it. And it is right up that hill right there over my shoulder. And we're going to go and check it out. All right. We'll see you very shortly. All right, so we're going to check out the Reed Cemetery, and David Cuff is going to talk to us about it. There's the sign that he carved during his restoration, but Hi, David. Hi. Welcome to the Reed Cemetery. This is a uh, fantastic project that was a long time in the making. Um, it's actually owned by a local home developer. It um, has been for years. The large property, even though the interior is large, all that land over there, the trees, is also part of it. Um, prior to the mid-1990s, this cemetery was in decent condition. None of the uh, headstones were broken. But in the mid-1990s, they were all destroyed, or all vandalized with a large, blunt object, it seems. Um, and it sat, you know, damaged for at least 15 years. Probably more. Um, then I came along and got permission to fix it up. And so I went along and uh, cleaned the whole property. It used to be very thick. You couldn't see through the property. It was one of the problems. Um, all the vegetation gave some cover to people who do bad things. And so I cleared it all, came right through it. And this also lets light in, lets air in, lets the vegetation on the ground grow, hopefully. And then once all that was clean, with the, it comes in three phases, basically. You clean the property, um, you can move around, and then you find the headstones, footstones, then you clean them. A lot of these I took off-site. I took to my house, washed them with my water hose, did a dry fit to see where they would fit back together and then I epoxied them back together and then I let them sit for a week and then I brought them back here I made some contraptions to haul them up the hill and then I put them in place a couple of seat clamps let them sit for a week good to go uh, this is the Reed family the Reed family in Princeton County was fairly large um, the father of the Reed family was born in 1755 I believe um, in Princeton County Lydia Reed, his wife, is there. They had a 500 acre farm pretty much where Hilton High School is today. Um, it was between Sprigs Road and then there was a road that went through the woods from over there on Sprigs Road, came through here and went up to the Hoadley area, which today is the intersection of Hoadley Road and Prince William Parkway. And so this cemetery was off of that road, off in the woods for a while. Um, but it was probably the highest elevation, which is where they like to put the cemeteries. So we just put them on here. Um, they're all the Reed families. These are the two daughters. What's interesting about these two daughters is they never married. Um, this is the last one to be buried here. In 19... Oh, no, sorry, that's not right. 1900 is the last one to be buried here. They had a big farm, and I guess they just worked on the farm, and back in those days, the population in Princeton County wasn't too good. After the Civil War, it was pretty bad for a long time. So. Um, I was able to find all these cemetery, all these headstones. They were knocked down, and most of them were covered in with dirt, plant matter, and other stuff. So, I take a probe rod, probe the area, and then find them. drew a little map of where all they all of them were placed so and he published it in his book and so we had that information it was very helpful so 
Lydia Reed is there. She's the wife. William Reed is here. He was the husband. Sarah Reed is over there. This stone, you can see it, had bad weather damage. It probably landed back there, face up. It's got a lot of weather damage. Fortunately, the brakes were pretty clean, so. <clears throat> this one's probably the worst one. Um, it's missing some parts. Couldn't find them, so. Piece back what we could find. The pieces are probably somewhere on the property. We just don't know where. And someday, maybe erosion will show them and make them visible. We'll find them, then we can put them back together. This stone's a fair reason because it was broken. And then it was just covered up with decomposed plant matter and other stuff. And it stayed not visible for years and years and years. And so it was pretty much undamaged. But that piece, that stone was broken in nine pieces. And I was able to find all the pieces, dry fit them back together, and then finally use epoxy to hold them together. The epoxy used is a, a polymer concrete epoxy. It's two parts, you mix it together. The stuff is incredible that it, after about a week, it's super, super, super hard. And it seems to to hold the stones together. That's, expi uh, that's specifically what it was designed for, is to hold cemetery tombstones together that were broken. Um, it Look. seems to do well in the wintertime. It's being frost freezing and thawing, so, so far so good. It does look like it does a good job. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic <clears throat> stuff. And a lot of times you see it, and even when I started doing it first, I used too much of it to where it would be like kind of oozing out the side of it. And uh, now I just use minimal amount, and you can almost not even see it. But it's definitely holding it together. Mm. Well, this looks like a lot of care was taken in trying to piece that together the best you could. Yeah, the best I could, but we're just missing way too many pieces. So I, uh, I tried to put that puzzle back together for quite a while. Footstone is also missing. It's broken here. That might be a different footstone. A lot of these footstones have the initials on top. This one is A. Oh yeah, you can a see. A R R. So that'd be. Sometimes it stands out a little better on video, so I'll zoom it in here. Maybe if I tilt it around, maybe. But uh, so that's handy. This cemetery also has periwinkle, which is this green stuff on the ground. It was specifically planted at cemeteries. It's not native. Um, my hope is since we cleared some of the above vegetation, that the sunlight and the rain will come in and allow this stuff to spread and keep growing. And luckily this cemetery has had two long-term neighbors on either side. They've been here since the late 70s when the houses were built. Um, and they kind of like watch over the cemetery. That's always good. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yep. So that's a base over there and by that tree, there's a, the, so the stone is missing for that one? Yes, that's a child. Um, I believe it's Redmond Reed. Uh, we probed it, couldn't find it. It's supposed to be somewhere directly underneath that tree supposed to be in line with the other one so hmm. could not find it well, that is the reed cemetery what is there eight or nine ten in here it's nine See its neighborhood pretty much on all sides. It is. It backs up yeah. to Dale Boulevard behind us. That's Dale Boulevard right there. Waterworks uh, Water Park is across the street if you are familiar with that on Dale Boulevard. Oh, 
Right, well, thank you very much, David, for the, the education here today. Thank you. You're welcome. Really appreciate what you do to, to restore these things and keep them nice looking for generations to come. That's the plan. It's very fun. It's very rewarding. Good physical activity. It's fun. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. Thank you again. Thank you.